Hello friends and welcome to another video lecture from Architects Academy Virtual Classroom. Today's lecture is going to be about sand used in construction. This can come as a question in your exam. Write a short note on sand used in construction. So you can take down notes as you view this lecture and prepare for your exam. So first let us see what is sand. So sand can be defined as fine pieces of rock or stone. Sand is also called as fine aggregate. So you will see that there are two types of aggregates which we use in construction. One is fine aggregate and coarse aggregate. So out of that sand is called as fine aggregate. Sand is also defined as coarse grain to fine grain sand ranging from 2 millimeters to 0 0.05 millimeters in particle size. So Particles which range from 2 millimeters to 0 0.05 millimeters can be termed as sand. Where is sand used in construction? That is the next point. So sand is used in many places in construction. Sand is used as an ingredient for preparation of mortar, which we know is a combination of sand and cement and this mortar is used for joining bricks and stone in masonry work and also for plaster work sand is used to prepare concrete so sand is used in combination with cement and coarse aggregate to form concrete which we use as plain cement concrete or it can be used in reinforced cement concrete sand is also used as a screed Screed means it is a type of a mortar in which the larger sand particles are used and this screed is used as a base for putting the flooring. So it is as if the flooring is stuck with the help of the screed. Now let us see what are the sources of sand. So from where is sand obtained? So we will see that basically there are three sources of sand. One is going to be the river sand. Second is going to be the pit sand and the third source is going to be the crushed sand. So let us see these three sources and what they mean. So you know that rocks are eroded as a result of the weathering action and the particles are carried down by the rivers and these particles get deposited on the banks of the river. So this is the first source of sand that is along the river beds. The second source is by digging deep into the earth we sometimes encounter layers of sand. So this sand is called as pit sand and it is obtained by digging pits in the ground. Nowadays we will see that the river sand is becoming more and more scarce as the construction activity is going up and in such a case there is always a scarcity of the sand. So nowadays what we are using is called as a crushed sand. So this crushed sand is obtained by crushing rocks to a fine particle size in the quarries. So they have got crushing machines or crushers and the rocks from the quarries are crushed to fine particles which can be used as sand. Another source of sand will be the sea. There are huge deposits of sand along the beaches of the sea. But this is normally not used for construction. So seen sand is normally not used for construction as it, as it contains salt and the salt is going to be harmful to the construction. One of the reasons is it contributes to the corrosion of the steel if it is a reinforced concrete uh, structure and it also causes efflorescence means that it causes white patches to form. Another thing which happens as a result of salt is that salt has a hygroscopic nature which means that it tends to absorb moisture and thereby it again tends to deteriorate the structure. Therefore sea sand is normally not used. Next point is what is meant by grading of sand. So we say that the sand used for construction should be well graded. What it means is that whatever sand we use for construction should have particles which should range from coarse particle size to fine particle size in a sort of a uniform way. So the sand which is used should have uniform amounts of coarse particles 
and fine particles. This is called as grading of sand and therefore, therefore well graded sand has to be used. Next question is how much amount of silt is permissible in the sand? So first let us try to understand what is meant by silt. So silt means fine sand or clay or other materials which are carried by running water and deposited as a sediment. So this silt is not a very good thing to be present in the sand and it is injurious to the concrete or the mortar. <coughs> so there is a sort of a limit to how much silt can be present in the sand. So normally we say that sand should not contain injurious amount of silts and the maximum amount of silt that is can be contained in the sand is going to be 7%. If the sand contains more than 7% of silt then the sand requires to be washed before it is used. Now how much silt is present in the sand is determined by a test called as a silt test. To view uh, more about the silt test you can go to our video which is on silt test of sand for sand. Next is that when we use sand for construction the sand should not be bulked. What it means is that the sand should not be swollen. Swollen as a result of the moisture present in it. So wet sand should be tested for the bulking before it is used. So what does this bulking means? The bulking means that whenever there is moisture present in the sand the sand tends to swell and increase in the volume. This is called as bulking of sand. Hence when we used sand which is bulked, what is happening is that the bulk volume of sand contains lesser sand than an equal volume of dry sand. So though it appears that the sand is having a certain volume, the actual amount of sand contained in that particular volume is less because there is a presence of water which is forming a film around the sand particles and therefore whenever we use the bulk sand it should be compensated the bulk uh, the sand extra sand needs to be added to compensate for bulking a detailed video has been prepared on the bulking of sand and you can refer to this video and another lecture now there is a related question to sand and that question is many times asked as an exam question that is compare between the river sand, pitch sand and sea sand. So let us see this comparison quickly in the form of this table. So what we see here is that pitch sand, river sand and sea sand are compared. So in pitch sand what we will see is that it is obtained from pits which are dug deep inside the earth. River sand on the other hand is obtained from the banks of the rivers while as sea sand is obtained from the seashore. Pitch sand is coarse in nature and has angular shaped particles. River sand is fine and coarse particles are having rounded shape. So it has got sand as fine and coarse particles both are present in river sand and the shape is rounded shape. Sea sand is very fine sand. Now pitch sand is used for concrete while as river sand can be used for concrete for preparing mortar for plaster and flooring and when this sand is sieved it can be used for external plaster or internal plaster. Sea sand on the other hand is not used in construction as we have seen earlier as it contains salt and this salt can damage the concrete and the steel reinforcement. Therefore sea sand is normally not used in construction. Now pitch sand is reddish brown in color, river sand is grayish in color while as sea sand is white in color. So if you get a question in the exam about comparison between pitch sand, river sand and sea sand, you can give a table like this and answer the question. I hope you have liked this video. If you have liked, please give us a like and also share this video with friends. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified about the new videos. If you have any questions or queries, you can always write to us at architectsacademy at gmail.com. Thank you.